Hey there, you're watching Amitha Verma. It's Christmas tree time, yay! I am so excited to share this tutorial with you today. I am gonna be showing you how to put together a beautiful farmhouse Christmas tree in just a few easy steps. Now I'm gonna show you how to use ribbons to enhance your tree. One of my favorite tricks to include a big assortment of ornaments on your tree and how to make them make sense out of the collection that you have. How I love to use stems to really take my tree to the next level and a few of my other favorite hacks to create a beautiful Christmas tree. Now one of the most frequently asked questions that I get is what color should your holiday decor be? Now if you're starting from scratch or you want to create a tree that is going to use a new color palette my best recommendation is to match your tree decor to your home decor. Now, I know that sounds kind of crazy, but when you have a really beautiful monochromatic palette, it's so soothing, so beautiful, and you can add more. But what if you love a whole other style of tree and it doesn't go with your decor? Well, I'm gonna show you ways to bring in those trendy colors that you love year after year and change up your tree without making a huge investment. So are you ready? Let's get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is take out our tree and you can probably see here, I've got a couple of bald spots all throughout my tree. I'm gonna fluff the branches to try and fill this in. Now, once you have your tree as fluffed up as you can, we're gonna move on to the next step. The next thing I'm gonna do on my tree is add the ribbon to the tree. No matter how big or how small, I try to include at least two types of ribbons. Now, if I'm working on a tall tree, like the one that I'm working on right now, I definitely try to incorporate three different styles of ribbons. The first type of ribbon I love to go for is what I call this luxurious luxe stretch ribbon. I love this ribbon, it has such a great curl to it and a great bend and it just drapes over a tree so beautifully. The next thing I like to look for is something that's going to add that pop of color to my tree. Now this is one of those hacks where you can take a very neutral color palette on your tree and then have it fulfill your desire to add color into your home. So this year I'm using this really beautiful blue velvet. I love this one with this gorgeous gold on the back side. So it's gonna add a very neutral color palette that's gonna go in with the room that I'm working with. Now the last thing I like to look for is something kind of special or glammy, something embellished with crystal or cut work or embroidered, some kind of detail to really give my tree that sparkly, glamorous Christmas factor. Now you can do this with any color palette that you're working with. So again, just following that same formula where I'm gonna look for the colors we wanna to add to the tree and then something just a little bit glammy to be like the jewelry of your ribbon collection. So the first ribbon that I'm gonna get started with is our beautiful ultra wide mesh. When you're arranging your ribbon, you can, if you're using an artificial tree, use the branches to hook your ribbon into, or you can use what I use, which is just a little spool of florist wire. And I just take a pair of scissors and cut it long enough to give my fingers leverage to wrap around the branch and apply your ribbon with this. I'm gonna start here at the corner and go a little bit taller than the tip of my tree. And then I'm gonna work my way down and around my tree in a diagonal manner. Now you don't wanna take this ribbon and kind of go across in a horizontal pattern. It's not, it doesn't suit this style of ribbon very well. Take the top, that's okay. Take the top, gather, go down about a foot, gather it and bake my first loop, just like so. Let's get, get our little florist wire. Now that I've got my top loop in, I'm gonna go in and create some little loops here throughout my tree. And I'm just gonna start zigging and zagging in a diagonal pattern down my tree. So I'm not gonna take it and just go directly vertical down, but I'm gonna go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, and a little bit to the left. 
So I'm gonna take my ribbon, bunch it up, and then come over here. And you don't wanna make your loops too big, otherwise it's gonna cover a lot of your tree. I don't mind having them a little bit bigger on the top because it's harder to get the ornaments up there. And then use my florist wire to get a good wrap. So my tree doesn't get undressed. That would be embarrassing. And I'll do the exact same thing in a different direction. I usually make them about 16 to about 18 inches long. So here you can see if, you, if you're just not sure or you can't tell from this tutorial, just grab a tape measure and that'll give you the right height for your big ribbon loops. And the tree that I'm working with is about seven and a half feet tall. Now I'm going to take my ribbon and just continue to alternate directions so I can get a really beautiful movement down my tree. As soon as I was done with that bow, it sort of rested over here, but I'm actually going to zag it to this side and then continue doing that down my tree. Now, as you can see, I've got this entire side here. We're not gonna try to take our ribbon all the way across. We're actually just gonna stay in this section and then start at the top and then continue to fill in the other sides of our tree. Now that I've completed this side, I am going to use the same technique to add a little bit of this style of ribbon over here on this empty section of my tree. Now, I will say it's hard to know if your ribbon looks good, especially when you're on a ladder. So if you're not sure, just get down, stand back and evaluate. Now that we're done with this first layer of ribbon, I'm going to move on to my blue velvet to start giving my tree that color. Okay, so first I'll take my ribbon and just create a pinch and then put a piece of florist wire around that to get it pinched nice and tight. You can hear that traction sound so good. And then I'll take my ribbon, fold it, and create a loop, and then use my florist wire to wrap that around and create that little one loop bow. And now I'll start with this in my tree. You can see when you create this, it turns all your ribbons around for you. So I'll just twist it back around to the blue because I want it to be blue at the top. And then here on my tail, I'm just gonna fold it like so. And then I am gonna give it a little trim. And there you go, you have a pretty little tail. And then I'll follow the initial pattern and get my first loop tied in right here. Now I'm not going to follow the exact same pattern that I did with my first layer of ribbon. I'm actually going to take this ribbon and wind it through my tree and then make it appear as if it's just magically popping out in one of these other sections somewhat following my ribbon pattern, but not identically laying it in the same spot. I've tied this bow. You can turn your ribbon around back to blue. You could do a little bit of more of a gold run, or you can see how this ribbon is turning right here, coiling, and you can also tie it just like this. That's the beauty of these really beautiful double colored ribbons. You can have your cake and eat it too. Now that I've done this section, I'm going to do the exact same thing with this beautiful blue velvet ribbon in this section of the tree. And just like that. Now I'm gonna take the little glammy ribbon that I wanna work with, and I'm just gonna unroll it and go ahead and cut it into about a three foot section so I can just use it sparingly in little spots throughout these big empty pockets that I have here on my tree. I'm gonna wind this really tight. I'm just gonna take about two fingers and roll the ribbon, and then I'll just pull the inside to the top. Those curls will come out for you. Now we are finally done with the ribbon. Now I know it may seem like a lot, but you can see just how beautiful the ribbons alone make your tree. This could be just enough for you if you wanna keep it really simple this year. 
Now I'm going to show you how to take all of the different types of ornaments that you have and lay them out on your table or lay them out in your floor and then we are going to, as my son Devin says, group and conquer. Your ornament selection may look like what I have going on around me. So these little blue ones right here, I consider these filler ornaments that I save for the very end because they're good to just add a little bit of color and have the light bounce off. So I'm gonna move these out of my way so I don't feel confused. Now the same thing goes for these really beautiful large glass ornaments. This is where you can go back and fill in those large empty spots that you still may have had after fluffing your tree with beautiful large size ornaments like this to again capture the light and fill in those empty spots. So we're not gonna worry about these filler ones right at this moment. Now what I am gonna do is take the decorative options and start to create groups of about three to four ornaments. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I've got this really beautiful blue glass ornament. So I'm just gonna place it down into what I'm gonna call group A, and I'm gonna take another ornament and put it into group B. Now the goal in creating these groups is you wanna put about three, maximum four, ornaments in each group. Now we're gonna use those groups to put the ornaments in on our tree in a very systematic, beautiful way. So it just depends on how many ornaments you have. If you have four ornament styles, then you'll create two groups. If you have eight ornament styles, you can create. But we're gonna see how many styles we have and create our groups of three, maximum four styles. Now when I create the groups, I'm just going to start pairing things that match or complement one another. Now I'm not gonna use the same shape if I've got odd shapes in the same group, I'll try to mix and match. Okay, there we go. And once I have my groups, I'm gonna start inserting them into these little empty pockets in between my ribbon and then zigzag and alternate, which sounds confusing, but what we're gonna do is first group our ornament group A section in here, and then we're gonna go to B, and we'll go back over here to A, and then back over here to B, and then down here to A, and then down here with B. And I know what you're thinking, there's only three or four ornaments in those groups. How on earth are you gonna fill all this in? Don't worry about that, we're gonna use our filler ornaments and one more of my favorite must-have tree decorating hacks. Sometimes when my ornament string is just too long, I just loop the entire string around the stem and it'll shorten the length a little bit so I can get it exactly where I want it. Okay, now we're gonna repeat and we are gonna do an A, B, A. So that was the last B, and then I'll just slide over here and continue on and do another pattern A. Now, after I finished the A group of the pattern over here, I just went back and finished that bottom section of my tree with the BAB grouping. Now, I know it sounds kind of confusing, but you can see we were able to quickly put the ornaments all over our tree without having to wonder or guess or see if you've repeated. Now before I move on to the topper and the bottom of my tree, those finishing touches, I wanted to share just two quick hacks for those times where you still may have big empty gaps in your tree. Now take for instance this big gaping hole right here. One of my favorite hacks is to look for larger oversized ornaments. One, to help create a little bit of contrast and then two, to just go right and place them right in here to fill in those spots for you. Now, if you've still got big gaping holes, my next favorite hack is to use these beautiful Christmas floral stems to fill in those gaps for you. Now that you know how to use this technique, you can opt for something a little bit more rustic, like these really beautiful pine cone stems to add a little bit more greenery and a little bit more earthiness to your tree. Now, if you're just a more is more person and you love holiday Christmas stems, you can take these 
different styles of stems and just simply arrange them to be draped into your tree over your ribbon in any empty sections that you may have on your tree. Now, if you remember those blue ornaments I put off to the side at the beginning, they're not gone. I saved them all the way up to this point. And I use these little ornaments to be my filler and fill in just in case I have a spot that hasn't received an ornament. Now, once I'm happy with my ornament placement and I feel like it's full, I'm gonna move on to just creating a little tree topper to complete my tree. This year, I'm gonna be using this really beautiful antique style crown. I love the brassy gold and these beautiful, really muted crystals on here. It's gonna go perfectly with this tree. And then I'll use my florist wire to get him nice and situated in there. And if you're using something like this and you feel like it's just too small, a great hack that you can do is use one of your Christmas floral stems, spread out the branches, they're usually pretty bendy, and then just place that around or behind your tree topper to create a little bit more fullness. Now that we're done with the top, I have my last finishing touch, which is my tree skirt. Now, if I tell you what I use for a tree skirt, promise me you won't laugh. You can laugh, you can get a good laugh. I love using a really heavy linen style fabric and creating folds and building it up to make it just feel very light and beautiful. And that secret linen-like fabric that I use, painter's drop cloth. Sometimes when you're working with a drop cloth or fabric or heavy linen, it can feel kind of heavy. And if you wanna just bulk it up real quick, just use a little bit of wadded up paper, especially at the base of the tree to build it up a little bit. And there you have it. You can see how I and how you can create such a beautiful Christmas tree in your own home. You can add as many or as little of these techniques that I showed you today, and they will definitely elevate your Christmas tree and help you create that designer look on your own Christmas tree. I hope you found this tutorial inspiring. If so, be sure to give it a thumbs up. That helps me know you love this type of content. Then when you're done, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell so you don't miss another one of our beautiful episodes. After that, head over to my blog where you can sign up to receive your design newsletter and soak in tons of great design tips. Till the next time we meet, keep on creating heart in your home. Testing, testing number one, it's Christmas tree time. And I'll bend over and do some more of my hacking. Now, one of the most frequently, have you guys met each other before? No. This, this is like now. my favorite customer. He came the first day the shop opened and broke our credit card machine because he spent so much money. And I was like, and it, 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 he looks just like Neil, my husband too. So I'm like, oh, he's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> or the sad face, like, oh my god, it's so hard. <laughs> An ABA. Dancing queen. But that was a BBA, right? I think only Beatrice mom knows the song I'm talking about. <laughs>